Um, to tell us more about this and give us some overview and insights into trends and data, um, we, we've brought in one of the, really one of the top researchers uh, and, and, and academics in, in Mexico on, on supply chain management. Um, he's, he's played, uh, he's, he's, he's a, a professor at one of the leading universities here. Uh, he's developed uh, metaheuristic algorithms that are, that are very widely used. Um, he is the associated professor of the Department of Industrial Engineering uh, at Tech de Monterey, um, where he's also the head of research for the Center of Sustainable Smart Logistics. So really, really well placed to take us on, on a bit of a journey here. It's my great pleasure to welcome Professor uh, Haishigai Kishtali uh, from Tech de Monterey. Professor Mustafa. Thank you, Mustafa. So thank you very much. Thanks very much. We're going to hand it over to you for the Thank presentation, you very much. and yes. we'll do some questions after. Okay. So, hello everyone. Thank you very much uh, for introducing me, and uh, good afternoon. We're still waiting for uh, more participants, but I start. So, uh, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to talk about future of sustainable logistics in Mexico. So today. I have some good news and bad news for you about the logistics in Mexico. And uh, so le le let us what is happening today in about uh, 25 or, or up to 30 minute presentation. Uh, let us introduce myself again. Uh, I'm Mustafa and uh, I'm the head of the research center, Sustainable Smart Logistics. We are the first in Mexico and in Latin America, and maybe top 10 worldwide. Uh, in terms of uh, research in log logistics, especially in global supply chain and uh, uh, smart logistics, sustainable logistics. And you can see our uh, maybe papers, articles. And also I'm the editor of the, some journals, Expert System with Application, Applied Subcomputing and Engineering Application of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, Usually it seems that uh, we are university professors and we are apart from maybe industries, but uh, let me tell you that most of our universi uh, university professors are working with industries, consultants, or maybe uh, personally I have more than 15 years of experience in different parts of the world in, in different uh, industries. And uh, so uh, we, we understand you and we are going to help you in, in your projects. Uh, this is Mexico, actually. Mm. Let me tell you and ask you a question. Do you know uh, why Christoph Columbus uh, found Mexico? She didn't. He didn't. No, a person uh, before him, so that was not a successful maybe try why they, they found Mexico and they came to Mexico. Because of the logistics. They, they, they were going to find uh, India. They were going to find another way to, to find China or India. So, so from the beginning, this is a special country. Can you imagine this map? How many countries uh, are like Mexico? The two oceans, you know, like a narrow, and a lot of maybe industries, two, two, two golfs. So this is Mexico, actually it's a logistic country. And we are talking about uh, an special logistics country in all over the world. Uh, let me tell you that according to our research, uh, there is a, like a, the, the main flow of um, automotive uh, logistics in all over the world are between in, are in North America, among Mexico, United States, and, and Canada. Okay, so when we are talking about the main flow of the logistics worldwide, so we should think about the key performance indicators or maybe aspects of this, this logistics. And we expect that, so this main flow of even for automotive logistics uh, is one of the important and best uh, in, in all over the world. As you can see, most of the companies, especially in uh, automotive industries, are working in, in, in Mexico. I'm in Puebla. And as you can see, Volkswagen and Audi, my friend Francisco, are working there. Uh, so uh, 
maybe more than five decades or maybe even to six decades they are working there. It shows something like uh, a stability, especially uh, on, on, on political issues and on also economical issues that they can work here and they cannot be like other countries like North Africa, Middle East, or even China. Let me tell you that the main flow of, of uh, logistics in Mexico, if we don't consider like a mineral or mineral, it belongs to uh, parts and, and uh, parts of the car actually and automotive industries. We have 12,000 SMEs, small and medium enterprises in whole Mexico and uh, more than uh, 3,000 in, in Puebla that uh, I'm working there. So if you see the GDP from logistics in Mexico, it is growing and that is really good for Mexico. But the point is that the last plan by government was written in 2018. This is very bad news for all of us because after 2018, the government didn't have any special plan for logistics in Mexico. So, and later I will show you what, what is happening now on logistics in Mexico. Uh, and if we consider like a third part logistics, so Mexico is one of the like a top 10 and uh, thanks to the industries, especially automotive industries, agriculture uh, sector. So we, we, we have a good uh, third party logistics in Mexico and uh, if we consider Latin America, uh, I can tell you that uh, Mexico is the best and the first. So this is a, this is a good news, uh, but still we need to uh, do more thing about logistics in Mexico. As I told you after 2018, we didn't have any special plan for logistics in Mexico, but uh, if we consider air freight, transportation in Mexico, according to this uh, statistic from uh, statista.com. So up to 2025, uh, hopefully we can, we can improve it up to like a twice in comparison with 2020. And uh, so we hope to have a, a good utilization of, of, of um, air freight transportation in Mexico. And how about the rail transportation? Do you know that there is a direct relation between utilization of rail transportation in a country like Germany, like Japan, and also the, 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 the industrialized percentage or something like that? And uh, unfortunately, in Mexico, we don't use uh, rail freight transportation as expected for, for that amount. Uh, mm, industries that we have. As you can see in this figure, like uh, United States, you know, Germany, uh, maybe more than 100% utilization of rail front, uh, freight transportation, Japan, China, India, but in Mexico, according to that, that uh, amount of uh, logistics works, works, we cannot use or we don't use do you know the utilization percentage of rail transportation in Mexico? At first, we don't have another, uh, <laughs> like a, enough rail uh, kilometers in Mexico. But for this case, we have less than 40% quarenta utilization of rail uh, freight transportation. And this is not a good uh, statistic. So, and uh, as I told you, we don't have any plan for logistics. And uh, as you can see, it will be like a flat, you know, the amount of the rail transportation up to 2025, it will be like a flat, a smooth. And that is not good for uh, Mexico because uh, if you are going to have a, like a uh, on time maybe, or maybe sustainable logistics, my, my, my PhD was about like a integrated scheduling of production and rail transportation, and I know the, the value of rail transportation in Mexico, but unfortunately we don't have any plan. So, and uh, as you can see, this is the result that we are still using truck 
Huh? Every day you can walk or maybe go from this city to that city. You can see a lot of truck coming from Veracruz to Puebla to Mexico City, Querétaro, Monterrey, and to the United States. So, another result is that we have uh, like a gas, greenhouse gas emission in Mexico is one of the top 10. And if we are going to be like a next generation, like sustainable logistics in Mexico, it, it makes it harder, okay? So, so uh, if you want to move to the next generation of, Mexi of, of the logistics, so we have like a primary problems, problems in Mexico. And these are the results. Francisco, you know the Atoyac River in Puebla? So, and also Veracruz. This is the image that we have, we can see every day in Mexico. But don't worry, we can do that, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and also this is like a radar or maybe like index uh, in, uh, but th this is for 2018 and uh, now we don't have any updated information for Mexico. And uh, another bad news, sorry to give you a lot of bad news today, but these are opportunity to work on that, okay? So this is the logistics index, Francisco, Richard. This is the logistics index uh, in Mexico. This was for 2018. And personally, I don't know. Uh, it is still decreasing or increasing. What do you think? Increasing? Hopefully increasing. But personally, I, I don't know. So th this is the, like a, uh, consequence of the logistics or maybe factories in different part of the uh, Mexico. Okay, so as you know, sustainability uh, is standing on three pillars. The first one is economy, that all of us are familiar with that. The next one is uh, environment, so we are thinking about the river, air pollution and something like that. But the last one is social aspect, like equity, like safety, health, and access, okay? So if you have only environment and, and uh, economy, maybe objective functions, so you are still green logistics, not sustainable logistics. You know, in South Korea, in Japan, so young people, young educated people, they, 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 they work, but they don't marry. If they marry, they don't, don't bring children. Why? This is because of the un stability, unsustainability, because they, they, don't, they, did, they didn't work on, on the social aspects. It seems that you have a good river, good maybe air quality, but if you don't have social aspects, so you are not sustainable. So I, I want to ask you a question. Who made these problems, as I told you, in, in Mexico? Who are the problem makers? or who were the problem makers? Government, universities, private sectors, like Audi, <laughs> United Nations, <laughs> Mafia in Mexico. Huh, Mafia, huh? All of her, all of them, okay. And uh, who is going to maybe improve this, this change and these indices in Mexico? Everybody, Everybody all of them. Good question. It depends. Good question. Good answer. Okay. So let, let, let us, what is happening there? So, you know, Germany, uh, more than, it, it reaches to maybe 3 million people. People are working on logistics and more than 220 billion euros every year in logistics. But on the other hand, 30% of the primary energy consumer or consumption and, and, and uh, this sector logistic is one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gas. So wh 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 what should we do actually? Uh, in, in one hand, we have a lot of money, we can earn a lot of money. And in the other hand, so you have the same problem in your companies but in a smaller size, okay? When I ask you sustainability, so this is a good word, like a green marketing. All of you are, are, are going to the next generation, but how 
we don't know. When, we don't know, okay? So, so uh, in this dilemma, uh, let, let us see who can, who can help us and who can solve this problem for us. This is also your, if you are working in different companies, so you, you can see uh, like a recent startup shakeup, logistic complex competition, consumer expectation, everything is growing. Uh, globalization, localization, shortening the product life cycle, reduction of lot sizes, price decline, especially after COVID about what, it, what happened on the, on the cars, and uh, limitation, regulation from government, Montreal protocol, Tokyo protocol. So sustainability, shortening of return to, uh, to investment, uh, time and rate, and also IoT or something like that that you are hearing every day and COVID-19 and pandemic, so destroyed all companies. So th th these are the problems that we have every day. And uh, on the other hand, we have some limitations from the governments, like, like a daily, daily, um, maximum daily driving time, maximum weekly driving time, compulsory break, uh, pay tolls, even for Mexico, they are pushing, pushing, pushing. So, in Audi, I, I expect to receive that, that part today, but uh, it comes maybe tomorrow. Why? Because th these are the regulations from the government. So, um, energy taxes, ro road pricing, so a lot of problems that we have. If you, if you didn't maybe may, uh, under, understood or faced so, 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 uh, such problem, so you, you, you can, uh, you may be faced in the early future. But on the other hand, we have some gadgets as a manager, logistic managers, or maybe business development manager. Every day you are listening about, or you are hearing about maybe IoT, um, blockchain, cloud computing, localization, mass customization. At the beginning, you are going to Wikipedia to maybe understand what is the meaning of that one. Every day, like Mustafa comes to your company, so I have a package for you, and it can reduce your cost, it can make you sustainable. As a manager like, like uh, Francisco, say that Mustafa, I accept, I accept you, but do, can you guarantee that tomorrow again you, can't, you, you will not come to my office and say another maybe package that I can reduce your maybe uh, cost by another technology? I, I should pay it again? And how about the, like uh, if you, for example, are working on IoT cloud computing, can you guarantee about the maybe the uh, m uh, data security? So who knows? In, in a lot of maybe exhibitions, they can offer you a lot of maybe packages. But who, who can make a decision about uh, the, the, these uh, maybe important and strategic decisions? And these are our slogan, like uh, Logistic 4.0, Round the clock, boom in the UA in German, 24/7, uh, like a faster replenishment. You are sleeping as a manager, logistic manager, and they are your your company is working. Why? Because artificial intelligence can make a decision, replenish the the the, the production line, charge the production line. So th these are the gadgets. But the problem is that we know the problem, and we have some maybe gadgets and tools on hand and we cannot connect and match it together because we, we, we are afraid of maybe future problems. So, just, just one as a, in, in automotive industries, 40%, maybe in 2019, uh, the, in the next five years, they are going to be like a, using the Logistic 4.0 to more than 65%, and so this is a real tight and maybe uh, competitive, uh, uh, r r like like a really tough maybe competition. Do you know about the China? Uh, what what happened about the kits or ECU uh, in 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 cars and in Mexico? You can see like a MG. It is a good brand. Uh, I don't want to talk behind back of that brand, but but you can see in Mexico, the the the, the country that is like a. Uh, supportive, especially in uh, automotive industries for United States. 
So if, if, if they like uh, knock down Mexico, especially in, in, in automotive industries, so they knock down the United States. So you, you, you saw what happened for the price in cars, especially in, in Mexico, and we couldn't find like a kit like ECU, electronic computer unit or something like that. Okay, so uh, most of the time you are working on uh, IoT, robotic, artificial intelligence, and these are the shares that they're uh, using the, the uh, maybe new gadgets, the t top 10 logistics industry trends. And, uh, and these are the points that still there are some uncertainties. If you are working in logistics, and if you ask even me or maybe uh, other companies that so, okay, we have these problems, we have these gadgets and tools like IoT, cloud computing, but who, uh, well, who can guarantee about the security concerns, uh, development of the cost, is un still unclear. Don't worry, I, I will send you the PowerPoint later if you want. And, and the speed of the uh, logistic actually is unclear. Next year, if you participate in, in, in the same maybe uh, event, again, we face uh, new technologies and uh, new maybe trends, okay? Let us come back to like a good, new, good news. Uh, or maybe our mission up to 2070. So uh, as you can see, we are going to be like uh, using uh, electricity, ammonia, and hydrogen. If you ask maybe Volkswagen, Audi, they can say that so like uh, Tesla, we are going to next generation. You know Tesla recently, recently last year actually established a company in Germany, you know what does that mean? You know Germany is the maybe the the mother of the maybe new car or car industries or automotive industry, but date about Tesla. So uh, after that, Audi, Volkswagen, they 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 like have. Uh, if you saw the news, they to, they said that uh, we are going to the next generation, and this is their their uh, mission to be there in 2070. But let me tell you, they don't know how. They don't know what is happening because, because, because it business, especially in automotive industries, has been very complex. And, and I know that uh, all of you, or most of you, actually have a lot of big questions, or maybe simple questions, on the other hand, uh, in, in logistics. Okay, so, and also, hopefully about the greenhouse gas. I don't know, Francisco, that this is a good news or bad news that we are going to reduce greenhouse gas. For the logistics and supply chain managers, I think this is bad news because they, 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 they are working on maybe different industries and uh, they have a lot of questions on how we can, we can reduce the greenhouse gas uh, before the government push them, okay? And again, I ask this question. But this time you should answer my question. Uh, who were the problem makers and who are the problem solvers? Uh -huh. <laughs> About uh, maybe 20 mi minutes ago, you 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 drank coffee. You were. Okay, Richard, if, if they don't answer my question, I go, don't go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came from Puebla to uh, get the, this answer of the question. <laughs> okay, well, well, what, what was your answer? Louder? Everybody. Everybody, yes. This, this is like a conservative, okay? But, but you should select from this one, okay? <laughs> maybe you are thinking about government or maybe private sectors, yes? But let me tell you, because you understand me, uh, and I can understand you because I, I worked in different industries. I did 
the same presentation may be since one year ago in different uh, places, but, but not in about the sustainability, about automotive or something like that, in different areas. No one, no one, I promise you, no one told me about universities. Maybe this is new for you. Why? At this moment, we need universities. Because, because the knowledge is power. No, no, not only for the, the, these maybe uh, complex uh, situation or condition. Whenever in industry, if you think that you have a lot of problems, big problems, and you have a lot of gadgets or tools that can solve your problems, like I IoT cloud computing, maybe localization, like a, a last mile delivery by drone or something like that. So please, please, before, before doing something, my time is over and my slide is over, don't worry. Uh, before doing some, something, before making a decision, please, please do the research, think more about it, because these are a strategic decision. Don't ask, accept, even from our sites, from university sites, if I give you one package that, uh, for example, this is te new technology for your company, it can reduce your cost, maybe it reduce the greenhouse gas or something like that. If I give you some big words, we, we can change like a revolution, go faster to be like a Tesla or something like that. Do not accept before doing a research, before trusting some, 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 maybe not only university professors or maybe PhD students, no. Before going forward, please think more about it because we are going, this is my slogan because this, this is my last word, that we are going to uh, actually enter to a new era, new complex and difficult era. And every, every small mistake, so it, it can knock down your company, okay? This is my word from both universities and industries. Okay, so I, I'm going to uh, give you my email, Mustafa Haji, and it's also my phone number if you have any question. And also if you need some data or maybe this PowerPoint, I will send you the PPT, okay? Don't worry. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mustafa. I think it was a thought-provoking presentation. Um, you know, knowledge is power here. You gave us, you know, not all good news, that's for sure. That's not, that's for sure. But I think, I think with some of the technology solutions that are there, with some of the collaboration that, that can come, including with centers like, like, like yours, um, th there is a clear path, uh, even if it is by 2070. And I'd just like to say, 2070, you're all invited to Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Mexico 2070. If you make it there, you're coming for free as well. I promise you that. Uh, you're probably having to travel in a carbon-free way as well, so we'll see what that looks like. Um, no, but really, thank you, thank you very much. Maybe just, um, we, we did run out of time, but maybe just, just a, a question. I know you, you reminded us that we should, we should consider universities in, in the mix here, but, but if we do look to, to the role the government is going to play here in Mexico, we heard this morning uh, about the importance of a coherent and holistic policy on yes. things like energy and sustainability. Um, it wasn't said, but do you kind of feel that that's clearly lacking right now, as, as you can speak more openly. Um, yes, yes. Actu actually, even uh, I missed it, this part. Uh, this is a very good question. And uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, even for the government, th th this point will be like a harder and maybe more, more important. That before they, b before they uh, start uh, maybe making a decision on logistics, uh, especially in Mexico, they also can refer to, 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 to the knowledge, and I, I don't want to say to, to the university, but to knowledge and science. Before any, maybe, a good plan, uh, we cannot uh, start. The point in Mexico that is now, we don't have any plan, even bad plan. But uh, if you want to make a plan, even for government, so we, we should have a good plan for, for them, and also then, then uh, we, we, we are going to like, uh, implement that plan. Uh, mm, j j just to continue the, the point you mentioned, we have a logistics center maybe first in Mexico and in maybe in Latin America, Sustainable Smart Logistics. 
And here I can inform that uh, we, we are at your service, any help from our side, from university side. And, uh, uh, but, but hopefully we have a good collaboration uh, with private sector and also in government. And hopefully we can help you from the university side. Thank you very much, Mustafa. You're, you're welcome. Here. We you're really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.